Now, welcome back. Um, you might now have already imported this entire package. You, we can continue from that. Or you have created your own scene. Uh, do not forget you have to have gone to, you have to go to package manager, hit this, add package from git URL and download the socket GitHub repo. I will have included in the previous video the link to be able to download that repo. The reason why I did not want to include it in my exported package itself is because, let's see, what if the creator of that asset decides to just remove that repo? I did not want to have it included and distributed even if he does not want it to be distributed. So if he removes it, I would like to respect that decision. And there are plenty of other uh, solutions you could download from the internet for Unity for the WebSocket solution. Now, what we are going to do is, as I said, we're not gonna have to set up the back end, the, the fun part. Um, we're gonna do that, uh, what we need is, Node.js does not have a front end like you see here. Unity is a fancy engine. What we're going to do is, is simply going to be a, VS Code, we will be staring at we will be staring at VS Code the entire time. But once we install Strapi, it will be it will act as a uh, front end of our database of our content management system. So we will see something, but most of the time we'll be coding in the back end in a raw IDE. Now you would have to do new window, create your own folder structure, and then open this VS Code. But I'm going to show you something uh, neat. Open up PowerShell. Um, open that, and we are now in this file directory, uh, C, C drive users, uh, David. Now, PowerShell, I like it more than the command prompt because we can here do ls, which are like Ubuntu commands. Um, let's see, uh, da, 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 what would I like to do? Make dir, so make directory, and we're going to create a folder, basically. It's called... Uh, Udemy projects. Now we made that. Hit CD, then type in Udemy and hit tab. Actually, hit tab. It autofills it, which means we're now going into that folder. Now if I hit LS, there is nothing in there. You can do it as many times as you want. You can even press up and use the previous command so it's basically just like linux that's why i like powershell i know you can use git bash z shell or whatever i don't want to download other uh i don't want to download more software i just want to use powershell because it's built in now what we can do is type in code space period this will open the current folder we are in 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 our powershell in a new VS Code window. Hit enter and boom. Now let's see what happens. We can click away the welcome. Let's see, it's already inside of this uh, folder. Actually, it's inside of Udemy projects. Let's make, let's close this, go back here, make there again and create uh, online Udemy game on my enemy game then cd into it just type in on hit tab enter and now do a code space period hit enter so now this is cleaner um okay we have everything here let's open up the terminal again here now view and open up problems because if we have any problems we have to check that out um okay so this is an empty project now let's see node.js we are gonna have to install node.js to be able to run javascript files in our repository now you can download node separately but what i recommend is download nvm instead it's called nvm oh, actually here nvm if i hit enter it, it doesn't exist because i've intentionally uninstalled it so i can install it again nvm is a node version manager which is basically a very simple command line tool which makes you very easily download and install node versions 
instead of needing to download everything separately. So if I just, let's go, uh, actually, let me do this. Node.js. Node.js, you would have to usually just download the LTS version 18.17. Do not download the current one, just the LTS version. But we want to use NVM. NVM will basically list all types of versions and we're going to use the command line to install everything. And it's super simple. So let's close this. Now, let's see. Go, uh, let me check. NVM. Oh, that's not NVM. NVM uh, download and install. Windows. Node version manager. So usually these are tools that you use for Linux or Mac. Um, how to install NVM, the NVM Windows repository. Is this it? Yeah, this is it actually. I remember that. So go to the NVM Windows repository. Cory Butler NVM Windows. Um, usually you would go to releases. And then you would need to see, you'd have to, see, there we go. So NVM setup executable and then hit save. Well, I've already, I've already installed it as you can see, so it gives the one. Now let's actually, wait, if I already have NVM, I already have NVM set up. So hit NVM setup. Yes, accept. Update a roaming, that's fine. That's fine, install. Quick finish the exit setup, nice. Now, all right, I'm back. Sorry for the long pause. Uh, I was hearing strange sounds coming from my house. I had to check real quick, but everything's fine. Now, what do we do? Okay, so we installed NVM and we've installed NVM on Windows. Um, Let's see, so we have to now go to back to our repo that we want to use. Um, Let's see. Um. I forgot to mention, we are going to need a GitHub account for this. I'm going to assume you have GitHub. And I think you're going to also need to set up GitHub as an extension here. What is going on here? This extension is deprecated. Use the GitHub pull request and issues. I don't have that. Oh, so it's maybe already built in. Publish to open. Okay. So this is fine. Now make a GitHub account and make sure that we can do git init because I want to initialize this as a GitHub repository. Using master as a name, okay. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Git init happened. Let's see. Let's publish branch. I think I should be able to. What if I have this online Udemy game? Publish to GitHub private repository public. <laughs> Uh, of course, if you're going to make a real game, make it private. Um, if you have GitHub, or if this is the first time setting up GitHub, when you register and you do a private GitHub repository, ooh, what's 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 going on? Can push rest, try to integrate your changes. Oh, I think I need some changes first. Um, okay, let's see. Git status. No commits yet on branch master git push. When you do a git push for the first time, you first have to do this git push set upstream origin master, paste that. Filter push refs to not match master doesn't master. Is it called main? Doesn't match any. Git add git commit. That's on branch master initial commit. Yeah, I think I'm gonna need some changes. So let's forget this for now. We did a git init, that's fine. Now we have installed NVM. What happens if we do this? NVM, hey, it works, the command works. If this does not work on Windows, you probably, well not you, the installation probably probably messed up with uh, adding the, the, the bash profile or the source profile of uh, What's it called? Setting the path so you can use NVM as a command. Make sure you're using PowerShell. If not, 
I think git, pat, git bash is also fine. If the command doesn't work, it, it has always worked for me, so it would be weird, but you can look it up on Google on how to fix that. Let's see, NVM. Now, I know we're going to be using Node uh, version 18, 1815, so let's see, NVM use uh 1815 it's not installed so we first have to install it. nvm install 1815. so it's now installing node instead of like downloading that executable and then installing it it's all doing if you have the command line watch what happens extracting node and npm it's also installing npm npm is let me show you and oh npm is yeah actually if we click this is the node package manager. This is where we download our libraries from. But as I said, we're not gonna be using NPM, we're, be, we're gonna use Yarn. But in order to use Yarn, we need to install it via NPM. It's almost as if like you're using Internet Explorer to install Chrome, its own replacement. So <laughs> now, we are, now we have uh, installed 1815. Let's do NVM use 1815. Oh, hit yes. Now using node 1815, that's nice. Now, uh, can we see if this actually works? NPM version 9.5, that's fine. So what you're going to do is NPM install uh, dash dash global yarn. This is how you install package globally so you can use it in every project. Hit enter. Now I already have yarn, so that's why it took one second. For you, it will probably take take longer. Now, um, all you have to do is type in yarn, and it will initialize your node project. I think. Boom! What just happened? Save log. Okay. So node modules. This is where your downloaded modules will be, and with a yarn log file. Now we have. Uh, git sees changes. So I think I should be able to now git add period, period. So it adds them and stages all the changes. Now git commit and give it a message. Uh, initial commit. All right, now git push. So it's going to ask us to do this. Git push, just copy this for the first time. Hit enter. There we go. So it needed some files changes to be able to push something. So if you now go to your GitHub private repository, you will see that it worked. By the way, if, it, if, uh, if it's a private repository, I will assume that you have SSH keys. You have to install, you have to do an SSH key gen to set up your uh, GitHub account to connect your computer with SSH keys to your GitHub, repo, uh, GitHub profile in order to be able to uh, get uh, Git push into private repositories that you own. Uh, GitHub has a nice uh, uh, tutorial for that, so do not worry about that. Now, um, we have done an init, an initialization of yarn. Let's see, uh, yarn, mm, we have nothing here, so. Now, the next step is, oh, sorry. The next step is to, install strappy into our node.js project now you have to see this as our node.js project what we have done is we have installed yarn so we can download modules libraries that we need but now we have to start adding our files and folders and scripts so what's going to happen is make a new folder call it backend because all our backend will reside into here we will install strappy into this folder structure but into the root of our uh let's see into the root of our project um we are also going to need all the configurations for docker and nginx now let's start with uh, uh, uh docker also actually wait um mm, we are also going to need an environment file dot env no I'm thinking of how I should order organize this. So what I'm going to do actually is I am first going to start adding the files that I need to do manually. When I'm done with that, I will share the files in a zip file with you under this video. 
you can import that, or not import it, just drag and drop the files and folders. And then I'll let you know at what point you have to follow along, start following along, because the back end will be generated. The rest is by hand. There will be a lot of copy pasting involved because a lot of files you're going to see now, a lot of scripts, I'm not going to write them by hand now because that's way too complex and unnecessary. So just make a .env file. This, all the our environment variables will be stored here. Now I am also going to, let's see. Um, actually, yeah, so we are now going to make a new file called docker compose. Bear with me, I'll explain in a minute what this means. Dev, and then can I duplicate this? I don't think I can, can I? I cannot, so make it a new file again. Docker compose prod yml. So again, Docker. Docker makes it super easy to move a project around. It's a container. We put all our code in the container with all the commands, and the commands are installing Postgres, installing Strapi, setting up ports, uh, assigning environment variables in a specific order, and that will make it's basically a list of things it has to do in a specific order, and it will both work in development and production, except there will be two small differences, and I'll show you in a minute. But now I am going to copy paste two folders, let me close this, called the conf for nginx and the docker files. So docker has two things, the docker compose file, which organizes the structure, Actually, let me uh, let me not copy paste it. Let me let me make it as we go. So, let's make a folder called Docker. Inside of this, we will we will we will we will. It's going to be for the backend. So make another folder inside of it called backend. And in the backend folder, we will make. Uh, how do we do that? Actually, yeah, new another folder called development and another folder and backend sorry a folder and backend called production in both we are going to make a file called capital d docker file and again here capital d docker file so as you can see we have a docker compose and a docker file for development and for production now I am going to, oh, what is this? Ah, it's empty, so it's crying. So open up, I'm gonna clean this real quick. Let's start with the Docker Compose and Dev, uh, Docker Compose Dev and Docker Compose Prod. I am going to double click this, and double click this so it stays there. Now you can actually cut this in half. I'm now going to copy paste what we need to do here in dev and for production. And let me explain. So let, let's save this real quick. Now, this is a blueprint of our project. Each service is a container. We will have an NGNX container and a Postgres container in development. What this means is Docker will download Postgres for us. Docker will set up NGINX for us. We don't need Postgres uh, locally. It, it's tell, it tells us the network's internal name driver, uh, the volumes it will use. So here, here's the data that will be stored in the volume. The network that is using is the internal network. Both are using internal. Postgres data volume, so that's this basically the ports that will be exposed from the Docker container to our local machine, because what's going to happen is Strapi will be run locally. Postgres will run in Docker. In production, Strapi will also run in Docker. The reason why I'm going to run Strapi locally separately is because, so Strapi is a content management system, and Strapi source of truth of its structure is its file system. If we run Strapi, which is this backend, which we will be running in production, if we run that in uh, Docker and we 
enter the admin panel and we click around and we create content types, it will generate the structure of those content in the file system. But what that does is if Docker generates those files, Docker becomes the owner. We cannot then enter the files in our repo and manually edit and save them because I don't have permission. I cannot save it. So I talked to Strappy about this and they said, yeah, Strappy, so the backend, you're supposed to run in Docker in production. But development, do not run that in Docker. Just run that locally, but run it in production in the Docker container. So that's why you don't see a backend here. Actually, we don't even need nginx here in the development uh, Docker Compose. All we need is Postgres, but let's leave it for now. So what's the difference in uh, development and production? Both have nginx. We don't even actually need nginx here, but whatever. Certbot, so this will run a cron job. Um, this will run a cron job that assigns a SSL certificate to your bot domain. But don't worry, we're not going to buy a domain. We're just going to connect to the external remote server IP. So we can actually remove this, but let's keep this in so that you can uh, use this for your production, real, real production game. This is the backend. So this is a Node.js. And I call this Strappy because of the only thing Node.js is going to do for us is the Strappy part. Um, here it asks for a Docker file. As you can see, let me control F this. There is no Docker file here. We actually don't need this Docker file here. We can remove that. Um, but let's keep it there because if your project becomes complex and you want to run other stuff, I'd rather keep the Docker file for you in the future if you want to add more stuff. Um, what we say is Dockerfile is located in docker slash backend slash the environment variable. So the environment is going to be taken from this end file. I'm going to populate that uh, soon too. Slash Dockerfile. So if we're in development, it will take this. If we're in production, it will take this. Um, node environment environment. Restart unless stopped. Environment variables further, which will take again from our environment variables volumes um i'm not going to explain fully how docker works because even i don't exactly know how all this mumbo jumbo works but just understand that this is the blueprint of all the containers it assigns all the ports assigns all the environment variables gives it a name you tell it which docker file to use and i'll explain in a minute what this is the docker file the docker file will contain the command step by step what you need to download uh, volumes so back in config it gets copied into app config but we don't know what what is app that will be defined in docker file so we also have postgres postgres user password da database name and that's fine okay now the docker file let's ignore the development docker file because we don't need that production docker file again i'm going to copy that let's see now I'm going to explain something funny. Uh, let's remove this, paste this, control A, control K, control U to on command. So as I said, Docker is a command, a list of commands that will run in sequence. The Docker compose file gets run and it defines the structure with its ports and the container names and the environment variables and its volumes and the network bridge it needs to use between each container and you. But you also have a Docker file. So it uses this Docker file here. And then as you can see, um, now one thing is I did not make, well, I made this, but I did not make this perfectly the first try. You usually make these commands, you fail and then remake them. Fail, remake, fail, remake. For example, this, I did not come up with this. There was a problem with uh, vips dev what is this again strappy is using a tool inside of it uh, to process images but using docker in windows and then docker in ubuntu in our remote server caused some issues so i needed this code uh, someone helped me with this in order to fix that issue so we could just do this try to run it and eventually it will give us errors in the production environment 
because of a, a different uh, operating system architecture. Um, then you will encounter these errors and try to fix them and come up with this and then commit it. And I have already done this for you so we don't get that error. So first, from Node, Alpine version, we install Node 1815 Alpine version. We do this mumbo jumbo because I already know in the future we're gonna get some errors. We're gonna mitigate that using this. Run make directory. So these are Linux commands. Make directory minus p slash app. Now our working directory becomes app. Remember, here is app. So what this does is these commands, let me go here. We already know, I've already uh, defined this even though I haven't generated yet, I already know what's going to happen. So again, you're going to work and then generate files, code, and then add as you go. Stash backend config, we'll go into app.config. So we'll go into app.config. Backend source, we'll go to app source. Backend package JSON, we'll go to app package JSON. Environment, we'll go to app environment, and so forth. Now here, mm, oh, it's funny. I already do that here. I don't think we even need this. Oh, hold on. Here it says we copy backend package JSON into app, backend yarn lock into app, env into app. This simply defines these volumes. Now, if I copy paste these two codes into ChatGPT, it will probably tell me, hey, you're doing duplicate stuff. We're not going to worry about that. It works, so don't fix it. Run yarn config set network timeout and any yarn install. So after we have assigned these, we will yarn, we will run yarn install. So what it will do is it looks at our package JSON, and we will see that after this. And I'll explain in a minute what package JSON is, and then we'll install the necessary modules. Copy backend into our app and node environment run yarn build, expose port 1337, and command line argument yarn start. It's safe. Now this is production. This is how to run Scrappy in production. All we were we are gonna have to do. Actually, mm, what's better? It's uh, let me think. It's actually better to not do that yet. Um, we are still missing the nginx config. Let me check. now the nginx config. It's a, a good amount of folders. So let me do a back and right click review and file explorer. We have that here. I'm going to drag and drop from what I have. Copy in here. And we will see it here. So don't worry. From this point, I will export this in a zip file. And all you need to do is just copy paste everything you see there. And I'll also fill in the environment variables. So nginx. What is nginx? We're also going to run that in Docker. Uh, nginx is, let me check. Um, ah, wait, let me check fast CGI. I don't know what this is, but we needed this. Don't, we don't care about this. Mime types, no idea. NGNX conf, no idea. What's important is the default conf. So almost every server, let me do it like this. Let's come with this for a minute. So usually when you go to www.yourdomainname.com, it first hits a load balancer or also let's call it NGNX. NGNX is a reverse proxy system. What that does is it first takes in someone's command of, hey, www.somethingsomething.com and says, hey, dude, is this an HTTP request? Then redirect that permanent, this is the code for permanent redirect, into HTTPS because we don't want insecure stuff. Now, if we are at the HTTPS version, so let's say we have redirected or we directly go to HTTPS, we redirect the slash. So you have uh, mydomainname.com slash. If we get that request, we redirect into HTTP backend port 1337. And the backend is going to be our da, 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 container name. If we do slash underscore health, it will also go here with a different setting. Now, Nginx is basically telling you, remember like 
sometimes you have websites. It's not www dot, but it's like dashboard dot your shop dot com. This is the part of the code that makes that happen. It will say, hey, uh, location, uh, server name. So here I did an API dot something something dot com. I could also do dashboard dot something something dot com, and it will actually um, redirect to another spot in my code. So we're going to leave it like this and we're not going to use this NGNX will all only run the production server because we are not going to be running uh, Strapi in Docker in development. We, we need this only for production. Strapi will be run separately so we can comment this and we will be using this code, actually this code. Let's see this code in production. And the difference is we are not going to buy a domain name. HTTPS is only for domain names. Here, we're not gonna, we are going to rent a server and get our own IP of DigitalOcean. And you're gonna put your IP here. And every time you navigate to this IP on the internet, it will say, hey, open this piece of code, l l direct to this piece of code. So direct to Strapi. Now, usually in Docker, not only do you have backend, you also have a front end. You can also run both backend and front end next to each other in your Docker containers. What would happen then is location, for example, um, usually what would happen if you want to run, if you want to go to your admin panel, you will go to mydomainname.com and it will direct to the admin panel. But what you could do is, I want my normal domain name. Oh, why is this not working? Oh, okay. My normal domain name to point, maybe we just copy this, copy that to the front end Docker container with, with no port. So if you have multiple Docker containers, you can orchestrate them here. Say, hey, normal domain name, you go to front end. Is it API dot domain name? Go to the back end. So I know that will be the strappy admin panel. But for now, we're not going to buy the domain name. It will simply be only the strappy endpoint, the strappy uh, IP. <clears throat> and this is my personal IP. I've already destroyed the container, so navigating here won't work. But we will be renting a DigitalOcean server for free and then put our own IP in here and we will move on. So save this, leave everything commented here. This is just for, uh... oh, by the way, let me explain something real quick. It was a pain in the ass to set up the SSL certificates. Um, <laughs> in the future, when you uh, actually make your real game, you're gonna need a domain name which is with HTTPS and you're gonna need SSL certificates. Your cert bot, did I seriously remove that? No. Oh. CertBot will run a cron job. Every 12 seconds, it will try to renew the SSL certificate. It will generate these SSL certificates. Here, you also need it to assign, uh, tell it, hey, this is where the files are living. Uh, I think uh, the browser is checking for these files. I'm not sure. But now, well-known Acme challenge. I forgot what it was this for again. Let me Google this real quick because I think this is for Let's Encrypt, right? Yeah. So remember the location slash will redirect you the backend. But if you go to mywebsite.com slash well-known Acme challenge, it will redirect him, redirect him to your folder structure for WW certbot. And this is where it will find your uh, SSL certificates. But we're not gonna use that. We will do that for our next advanced course. Let hit uh, control K, control C, control, yeah, control K, control C, does that. <laughs> it's safe. Now, the environment variables. Um, environment variables are not supposed to be pushed into GitHub, but it sees this as a change. We can just put a git ignore dot git ignore. I think we can put a uh, asterisk dot env. And if we do that, I think it will stop tracking. Boom, there we are. It's tracks the git ignore, but we told git ignore to git 
to make it git ignore the .env file. That's perfect. Now, all that's left is the env files, env uh, variables. Um, let's see, actually, were they generated? No, they're not generated. Um, yeah, let me copy paste this. So these are the environment variables. We will be able to access them everywhere in our code, everywhere in our repo. Oh, zero, zero, zero. That's the main, that's the internal IP for the Docker container, port one through three, seven. Now I copy pasted these after generating Strappy. So I did this in the future already and went back in time now and copy pasted them. You will see that this is the, these are the things that Strappy generates in its, in its own env file. Database client Postgres, host the uh, local host, port 5332, database name Udemy game. Let's call it, uh, I, want, I like to call it the same project name, so online Udemy game. Default username and password is Postgres. Postgres, change these. You don't want to get hacked. Everyone knows it's Postgres, Postgres, change these, but I'm going to keep this up for simplicity. JWT secrets, never share these tokens. I'm showing you these because I'm going to destroy them anyway, and I've never used them at all. Um, <laughs> environment development, project log, uh, let's copy this. Public URL, uh, this is a mock placeholder URL. Don't take that too serious. Environment development. So this is where the Docker file will take the env environment variable from here. For now, we are in development. When we, when we push this in the remote server in production, we're gonna change this into production. This will turn production and it will follow the Docker backend production Docker file structure. Now, let's save everything. At this point, I will share um, all these files for you to download now and put them in your, uh, in your same repo. And now we are going to continue with actual Strapi. We don't need this anymore. Backend. Um, yeah, so right now, copy everything that I sent you. And let's see, uh, we can... Yeah, actually, let's now run Docker because I want Postgres to run. now. If you're on, actually, let me say this. We're not going to run, we are now going to run Postgres in Docker. But if you already have Postgres locally installed, oh, yeah, if you have Postgres locally installed, it's going to cause some conflicts. So you have to disable Postgres. Now, if you're on Mac, it's as simple as open up the terminal sudo service postgresql stop now it's not going to work because i'm on windows if you're on mac or linux use this if you're on windows we have to do it a little bit different and we have to do this i or save it here um, open terminal with right click run as administrator so it opens up a windows system 32 net stop PostgreSQL dash x64 dash 15. I think because my Postgres server was uh, version 15, this is it. Service is stopping, service will stop successfully. If this does not work, change your version or you would have to Google on how to uh, maybe even uninstall or just stop Postgres. So locally, your Postgres is stop. Now, I forgot to mention one thing. In order to, now, um, you might, you well, might, you will actually see errors here because you actually don't have Docker. You have to install Docker locally too. So install Docker Desktop. Let me Docker Desktop. For if you're on Mac, you can wait. Is this for Mac? No. So for Mac, you can install via the command line Docker Server, I think, and it will also install Docker Compose uh, command. For Windows, you have to install Docker Desktop. Now you download it for Windows, and once you run it, you'll get an error. Right now, I do not have that error. So if you go to Docker Desktop, 
you will it will try to open this but you will see a problem you will see an error and i think the error is um uh, the, uh let me check docker desktop error it's gonna be what's it called it has a special name uh yeah docker desktop is unable to detect a hypervisor or something like that so we uh, it will say uh, hardware assisted virtualization and data execution protection must be enabled in the BIOS. So in the BIOS, that means you're going to have to restart your computer and open up the BIOS settings. No, we're not going to do that. I actually have a, uh, a link for you. And that link is, I will share this link too. Um, so Windows has to enable virtualization. So Let's see, and try no auto restart the hypervisor, no copy and paste in it. Yeah. So uh what what made it fixed for me is just open up PowerShell again, right click as administrator. And there are a couple things you have to do. Run this command, BCD edit. Again, I'll share the link. And it says restart your PC, but don't do that yet. Now, once you've done that, hit your Windows button, type run. Go to optional features, so hit OK. Hyper-V, this is unchecked, check it. Activate this and hit OK. And I'm trying to think of, is there something else that you need to do? Um, I think there is another, no. Well, maybe. Now, after you do these two things, uh, reboot your computer and open up Docker Desktop again. If that does not work, I'm afraid you're going to have to go into your BIOS settings and enable virtualization. No, now this is what people mean with, "Hey, Mac is a Unix-based system; it's ten times better for development." And yeah, this is the point where you're like, "Oh shit, I should have gotten a Mac." Yeah, Windows is sometimes a pain in the ass. You leave the, either you leave your computer and it decides to randomly update your software, your Windows version, but whatever. These two things made it work for me, and I restarted it, and I was able to uh, get this running. Now, restart your computer after having done that. If that still doesn't work, it goes into the BIOS settings, enable virtualization, and it should work 100%. Now, welcome back. Um, Open up Docker Desktop and then close it. We're never going to use that again. We're going back here. And it should now show these. Um, yeah, it already shows my uh, images from my history. I have made uh, DevTools Advanced for, uh, and Game Dev Asset Store. Just some projects I was working on. If, you, if it's still bugging, hit refresh and it should show up. Now... Let's go back to it's a mess here. So what's going? What were you going to do here? Holy, wait, what was that? Can I do that? And okay, yeah. Now we have disabled Postgres. Uh, you should have the Docker daemon up and running. Um, at this point, I have uh, copied. I have zip. Uh, put them on a zip file. All these files. I'll send them over to you import them if you haven't done so and now we're going to start generating but we are first going to start running docker because if we go to docker we're in development docker compose dev it will run postgres and we need postgres first before we can initialize strapi because strapi is going to ask us hey uh where's your postgres uh, database uh, what's the name what's uh, help me out here so we will need postgres first so let's run that now we are in the root directory because we have two different uh, dev and production, we want to run dev first because we're in dev development. You type in Docker. Com oh, what the? Wait, let me. Docker compose minus F to choose a specific Docker compose file. Dash dev. You can press tab for it to autocomplete, right? Or am I messing up? Oh, dot dev. Yeah press tab to autocomplete and hit build first we build it so hit enter why was that so fast am i did i just mess up something that's odd 
Let's see, Docker and Compose, press up and hit up. Oh, I didn't need to build anything. We just need to do up. Let's see, so it's now running all these commands, setting up the Docker container for Nginx and Postgres. Let's see, do we get any errors? See, server started, create a database. This is all post, all you do usually manually if you install Postgres, but Docker is not doing this for us. Uh, the Postgres database system, database system, shut down. So Nginx exited with code because in development environment, we do not need Nginx. So I think you're gonna see, see the icon is changing because it's trying to restart. Just stop that because we actually don't need Nginx in, in our local environment. It's stopping the container. Exit it, now it's stopped. All that's working is Postgres. Now, we have Postgres running. We go to the file, so backend. Um, we now need to, um, mm -mm -mm. we have to install Strapi now, and we cannot use this terminal. So divide that, and we are gonna start fresh. Now, let me show you the quick start guide. So Strapi version four. Right now, Strapi version four is the latest Strapi, and they're already working on uh, updating it to version five. So if you're from the future, well, you will, be from the future there will already be strappy version 5 but i'm sorry i cannot use strappy version 5 because it hasn't released yet we're going to use the latest strappy version 4 and it's very simple see you have a yarn variant or npm both do the same thing yarn is just faster did you see it was also the default option because they know yarn is far superior now we're gonna have to copy this command and run this command but the quick start installation sets us strapped with the SQLite database. We do not want that. We want the Postgres database. So we're not going to use quick start. We will do yarn create strappy app backend. Our, our project is called backend. So the backend is backend. Our container name is backend. We're going to use backend. So yarn create strappy app backend. Boom. Yarn create. Now it's downloading all the necessary packages. It's setting up everything. So I think I can open up this folder and it will show you, uh, let's see, successfully, success install. This is gonna take some time, I think. Create strap, yep. Ah, there we go. So it's giving us options. Quick start, no. We're gonna do, oh, click on this. Quick start, no. We're gonna use custom. Choose our installation type. We're gonna use TypeScript. Uh, Choose your full database client, it's Postgres. Database name, backend, no. Our database name is online Udemy game. Online Udemy game. Database name, host, yeah, press, just press enter. Enter. Username, the password. I'm going to use Postgres, Postgres for now. You set it to something different and then edit it here too. So Postgres, Postgres, enable SSL connection, no. Creating a custom a project with custom, boom. Did you see that? <clears throat> so it just created a strappy for us with a package of JSON. And I'll, let's, let, let, let's make this finish. Let's let this finish. And as you can see, it also has an environment uh, it, yeah, so it generated new uh, 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 tokens and secrets. There we go. Okay. So, as I said, I had, as you can see, the difference is almost nothing. I had copy pasted this from the strappy into env because I didn't want, I just wanted to be sure and didn't think about any problems. So I just made both the same thing, except this one needed also these two. These three, I mean. Doesn't have JWT secret. That's odd. I think I need a. Maybe it's this one. Okay. <laughs> so what this is doing? Look at this. It's also fetching the node modules. There's nothing in it right now. But Strapi itself also need node needs node modules. So let's see. We have config, TypeScript files, database. Migrations, nothing. We don't need that public. We're not going to use that source. We're not going to use that. Actually, we will use that, I think. 
extensions. Okay, not yet. It's still busy. And for example, to be modified, to be modified, to be modified. Okay, package JSON. Now, while it's doing this, let me explain what the package JSON is. This is the skeleton of our node project. This contains all the information. Well, of course, description, version, name, we don't care about that. Well, only we care, oh, we only care about this and that's it. So remember, do you remember? So where is the Docker file? Let me open the Docker file development. Ah, we don't have anything. Docker file production. Let me do it here. In order to start Strappy locally, there are command line commands, scripts. So yarn develop, yarn start, yarn build, yarn strappy. When we are developing, we are running the development build, which is like the inefficient memory one. By doing yarn develop, which runs strappy develop, in production, we will be run yarn start. As you can see, the Docker file production also has this command yarn start. So we are running locally Strapi. We will be running it by doing yarn develop. And here, as you can see, the commands in Docker says, hey, in order to do, run the production version and the production build, we will do yarn start instead of yarn develop. Had this been back in develop, this would have been yarn develop. Now, here are the dependencies. This says, hey, Strapi needs these node modules. Strapi uses these libraries. They have partitioned everything into different libraries. PG stands for Postgres, I think driver, client. And these Strapi um, uh, libraries also have their own libraries, node modules. Oh, let's see. So your application was created. Strapi has been has been uh, 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 installed. So yarn develop, start strappy in watch mode, change and strap project files were triggered. Our server restart is nice. Start strappy without watch mode, yarn build, build strappy on a panel, dis display all, yarn, all available commands, yarn develop. Okay. Ooh, it took 200 seconds. Okay, almost five minutes. Let's see. So this is where all our configurations will be. It's just taking the environment variables, API, default limit as in rate limiting, max limit, database connection. Oh, this is a lot. I don't think this is right. We will change this later. Strapping errors. Ah, okay. Middleware course here. You can set the course policy. You can expand this and just to handle some core stuff. Server TS, uh, this is the initialization of the server. Host is 00, zero port 137, array keys, populate relations. Okay, database, and there's nothing in here. That's a lot of node modules. Strap uses a lot of libraries. This is, yeah, this is a lot. This is a lot. Now, if you ever, um, Let's say you, this entire project, you zip file, you zip this entire project to share, never share the node modules. You can literally delete them and the package adjacent, where is it? It's a yarn lock. Yeah, the yarn lock and the package adjacent, actually yarn, why do I not see? The package adjacent and the yarn lock together are telling the project, hey, if this guy ever types in yarn, actually, always like this, yarn. Oh, hold on, sorry. I have to CD into the back end and then do yarn. Watch what happens. Ooh, what is it doing, actually? I did not want this, I think. What is this doing? Five seconds. It was just checking things. Now, it took five seconds because node module is already installed. Now, if you want to share all these files, delete the node modules, share it, then the developer just can type in yarn and it does the entire 300 second mumbo jumbo again and downloads every module it needs. As you can see, it's grayed out because the git ignore tells, hey, don't, 
don't commit the node modules. So if we commit this in uh, even the env file, if we commit this in uh, git, it will not go with it because this is gigabytes of data. Public, I don't think there is, ah, it's a robust.txt. We don't care about that. Source app example, we do not need this. TS config, we do not need that. API, we do need, we do not need that. We do not need that. Yeah, we are going to, okay, so, um, the bootstrap function index ts index.typescript. So what is this by the way? Okay, nothing. Um, should I actually start explaining with this? Mm, no, let's not confuse you. So this is strappy. Um now we can run strappy. So we have Postgres set up. Our database is set up. All we can do, all we all we should do now is make sure you're in the back end and run yarn develop. So every yarn command in this directory will look for package JSON and look for the command you input. It will run strappy develop. So if we do this yarn develop, hit enter, it's now gonna start up strappy. Now watch what happens. I hope it works, no errors. Strappy develop, it takes some time. I think the first time takes some time. That's taking a long time. In the meantime, let's uh, oh, start in the compilation of TypeScript files, building your admin UI with development configuration, admin UI built successfully. That's nice. Ooh, dist. So what this did is TypeScript. Um, okay, so um, TypeScript is being compiled into JavaScript. That's what this dist folder means. Everything that has been compiled into JavaScript will appear here. And your software, your Node.js, will run, will look at these JS files. It's not Node.ts, it's Node.js. So TypeScript is also, also not read by your Chrome uh, browser. You, you, it cannot be, it, like Chrome is JavaScript. Everything that is JavaScript Node.js, any JavaScript framework needs JavaScript. It does not use TS or read TS directly. So everything gets compiled. You saw what happened here. Starting compilation for TypeScript files in backend, and this is what it did. We do not touch these directly because TS files will overwrite whatever it says here. This is some mumbo jumbo even I don't understand. We're going to call code in TS. We are never going to touch the dist. It's also, as you can see, not tracked by Git. It's grayed out. But um, anyway, it worked. If you just did this, create your first administrator by going to the administration panel. Oh, well, let's go. Boom. When you run yarn develop successfully, this will pop up. Now, let me check something real quick. Um, okay, so when I click on these fields, it's showing some private information. So go ahead, put, put your first name, first name, last name, email, password, confirm password. You need to check this. This is, by the way, locally. It's your local host. You don't need to put in uh, serious data in here. I'll do that real quick right now. So type that in. <laughs> this is my email. This is my password. Hunter2. All right. And let's start. All right. So you will be presented with this. <laughs> now, Strappy does have a dark mode, but I keep forgetting where it is. It's some, somewhere hidden in the settings. I just can't I keep forget where it is. Um, Let's see. Let's go back to the code. Is there something else? This is the Unity code. This is the backend code. So remember where we left off with Unity. We're going to have to register. We get, we're going to log in, we get a JWT token, we go to the select screen, we get presented with the possible characters we can use, we go into the battle, so we match make, and in the battle, we will see our character with his possible skills. Now, inside of Strappy, uh, let's see, uh, now, inside of Strappy, 
This is our admin panel. What, what it will look like in the end, in a serious game, api.something.com slash admin. But for now, it's localhost. And uh, let's see, strappy dashboard workplace, content manager. So this is where your content will reside. Every registration will pop up here as a user account. Now, how can I best explain this? Uh, let, let's go through everything. So this is the content manager, man, account, content manager with its collection types or single types. So single types can be your website's homepage. Collection types are users, characters, skills of characters, articles in a blog, uh, everything, missions, mission requirements. And we are using... Uh, let me show you something. Um, if you have PG Admin or DBeaver, both are fine. I will use DBeaver. DBeaver is, it shows your database. It's a, it's a database viewer. Strapi is also actually a database viewer, but a fancy one. And it generates APIs for users. So user register is already automatically generated. User login is already automatically generated. If we create character, it will automatically generate the fetch, so the create, read, update, delete endpoints, and we will we will see that soon. So, I use dbeaver to uh, view my databases. Let's go here, database. Here, it already sees online Udemy game. Now it's connected with localhost five four three two, but my Postgres is running in my Docker. But as you can see, it's exposing its own port to my five four three two port. This is why we had to disable Postgres locally. If Postgres were running, this would conflict. This was that would conflict. So go back to DBeaver. Strappy, if we open this and then schemas, and public tables, this is what Strappy has generated. Now let me find. Um, as you can see, this is a relational database. What that means is. What's going to happen is we are going to create in the content type builder the skeleton of our character. As you can see, this is the user, the username, email, the password, confirmed. So if someone has confirmed their account via the, 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 the email registration or if they're banned, we're going to create character. We give that character a name. Uh, uh, health, a uh, mana amount, the starting health, the starting mana. But we also create a collection of skills, and then we will relate those skills to that character. Now, I want to drink some water, so I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna end. I'm gonna end the video here. This was long enough, I think. Ooh, this video is like one hour. So what we have done is, we've started Strappy. We needed to start Strappy to be able to register and log in. We have set up everything. Remember, you have copied all these files and then generated this backend with the yarn command. And we run yarn develop to actually start the server. Postgres is running, Docker is running, TypeScript is being compiled into JavaScript. And um, yeah, the next video we will start creating. Actually, we're not going to start creating the structure. We are now, uh, in the next video, going to register and log in successfully. See you in the next video.